My grandfather was born here. My first job was here on the Southport, so I've always had a connection to Bluff. Came here to visit, really, and never left. And we're just one tight community that have always got each other's backs. It's definitely a place that I've you know, got love for. I've got love for the, for the place, love for the people. So it's a place that I wanted to do something special for. I followed the, the project, the first South Sea 3 out in Riverton, and I said to Danny, what are we going to do to bring this to Bluff? Every so often since then, um, of, hey, well, how's it going? Are we bringing this to Bluff yet? Yeah, what's the deal? Eventually one of those knocks on the door to him, of, you know, um, virtually, we're bringing it to Bluff. No way. Couldn't believe it. Since then I've just been on board to help with anything I can. Can almost hardly believe it. It's here and it's happened and, yeah, too good to be true almost, you know. We're all here, painting on the streets of Bluff, all sort of within about five blocks of each other, each creating our own murals for the community. We've been here for about five days, and although that's kind of been a short time, we've managed to, I guess, see a lot of the community and a lot of the people that live here. And for me, that's probably uh, holds the most value because we've really got an idea of what it feels like to be part of this community here, you know, we're not just kind of painting the walls. It's funny, like you live in Aotearoa and then the first time you come down to the bottom of the country, you sort of don't know what to expect. Yeah, the southern hospitality has just been, it's put everything else to shame basically. Yeah, they've looked after us, they've, they've made us feel right at home. I think, you know, Manaki and the idea of Manaki being you know, a te ao Māori world view. You know, like when you're, when you're looked after so well, there's this exchange as a creative to give as much as they've given you. And so this hospitality, you know, a lot of people would just call it just food or just this, but you know, it's so much deeper and richer than that. And so for us to come and to be looked after so well by um, and the Miharo crew, which are mind blowing. You absorb it all and you absorb the kai, obviously. <laughs> Too much absorbing. Um, but it's exchanged and it's processed and it's given back out as energy, and then that's what goes into the murals. We come from an isolated part of New Zealand, and, and sometimes it's hard for us to attract people here. So um, when we do get artists come. We want to um, just really look after them and try and create a home away from home. And we always want them to come back. And, and if we do that very well, chances are they might come back. <laughs> Most people up north don't even know that we exist. Generally around the country when you say I'm from Bluff, they're like, where? And they think that like gore is like we're New Zealandians, but no, we will be put on the map because we've got so much to offer. I mean, like a, a lot of people have said like, oh, Bluffs a fishing town, port town, industry town, They're, you know, but reality is like, everybody needs a little color in their life, you know? And really it's probably for the next generation, for the, for the young ones, like to inspire them to potentially become mural artists or, or artists or creators in some way. So like to have some visual stimuli, uh, I, I feel it's good for the soul. As part of one of our last days of uh, this kind of festival, me and uh, Icarus, we delivered a bit of a workshop to about 15 youth. Uh, some were from Bluff um, and some in Invercargill. And we basically taught them kind of the basics of graffiti, uh, and lettering and how to and the technical things of how to use spray paint and so from that uh, they basically helped us to paint a DTR TMD piece. If a, a young person is interested in graffiti it's often pretty hard to figure out how you do it even before the process of like how you fill in and paint and outline a piece I mean even how do you get enough cans to do it and 
how do you have a space where you can, you know, you can paint? You know, there was no one around to sort of tell us about it when we were young, you know, to be like, yeah, you can turn it into this and it can become this and you can actually get paid like a bunch of money to uh, travel around doing what you, what you enjoy. You know, there were a couple of kids on that workshop that their family members were saying they'd been um, already been caught maybe doing some tagging and stuff. So it was good to see them learning like how to channel that energy into a more positive direction, you know. And hopefully, actually, there is opportunities for them in the future to be able to apply some of those skill sets somewhere back into the community. On Wednesday or Thursday, we had like four busloads of out-of-town schools come all the way into Bluff, into our community, and go through all the murals and like talk to the artists so the artists could explain. So the murals depicting the Haast Eagle, which was a prehistoric bird that we used to have in New Zealand that could eat more. So yeah, took some uh, New Zealand history and, and put it on the wall. I was, you know, always um, into like American culture stuff and my father bought me subway art from a garage sale. I was totally blown away. I was like, wow, this is pretty amazing. Yeah. So I'm part of DTR crew, which is like a Christchurch graffiti crew that you know existed a long time ago when we were teenagers. Just like a bunch of friends that get along really well and kind of are on the same page as far as like producing artwork goes. But yeah, as well as, you know, it's kind of just all about having laughs. <laughs> have a sense of reflection of the community that you're working with and also the environment because at the end of the day you're putting something in the public realm that everyone has to see so you need to have that connection or just some really kick-ass imagery. <laughs> I saw the wall, which was actually a building, um, and my first impressions was like, oh my god, how am I going to paint this? Well then I saw the typeface at the top, the old Art Deco typeface, and I thought there's something in there. So the whole idea was to actually do a restoration job of the building and bring it back to the building to how it would have been or how it was envisioned. And when I got here, I found out that um, Tim Aldi is actually going to be moving in there. So I was talking to him and thought, well, maybe I'll drop a um, heitiki. So he gave me a um, heitiki design, which is from Bluff here, and um, included that in the centerpiece, and then had my patterns around the outside that holding it in. So the piece I've done here in Bluff uh, is a collaboration piece with a local historian, um, Michael Stevens. And so I actually asked him first, uh, who do you think I should paint or pay tribute through my mural here? And he suggested uh, doing a painting of Tohi Te Marama, uh, who was a very significant uh, rangatira uh, and chief here and person here. I painted a Bluff oyster, you know, paying homage to the, the mighty Bluffy oyster, um, but also Tohi Tamarama was the first person to discover uh, the oyster bed here in Flavor Street. So, hugely significant aspect of, of the history here of Bluff. But I think the most uh, poignant part of his life and story is uh, he had children, but they've all passed, so he has no living descendants. And so, with that, his story and life has kind of faded. And a lot of people don't know who, who Tohi Tamarama is, even people here in locals in Bluff. So the main reason why I painted this was to resurrect his story and his life, really. And so it's been a huge honour for me to be able to do that here in Bluff. Uh, 
um, here Piki, Te Ora, Te, te Wairua o Tō Tātou, Hapore, Mō Tō Tātou, Te Neba, and Te Tēnā Koutou, Te Tēnā Koutou, Te Tēnā Tātou. Um, people voted and for the People's Choice Award, it's the Kiri Lee Fishing Limited People's Choice Award. And so if you didn't know, there's a $2,000 cash prize for that. And plus there's a lovely taonga that was created by Timodi as a gift for the winner of the People's Choice. Thank you, Thank you Timodi. So the winner of the Kiri Lee Fishing Limited People's Choice for 2021 South Sea Spray is Koru. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I was so surprised because this is uh, my officially first mural festival, I think. You know, this is like New Zealand's finest artists came to the bluff, but I'm one of the best for the people. When the poll line said uh, the winner is Koryu, but after like 15 minutes, I still not sure what's happened to me. <laughs> Just like hug with everyone, but what? <laughs> yeah, it feels like that. It was champ champ, hey? I just want to say thank, like really thank you, and really thanks for having me. Really thanks for the supporting and everything. That's, yeah, as I said before, this is, uh, one of my happiest moments in my life, for sure. We always had enough food because we've got plenty of kaimoana around here and we lived on that. We never had toys, we played in the bush and swam in the sea. My husband joined the oyster industry and he was an oysterman for about 30 years or so before he retired, so. Oh, he was just a very friendly man and got on with everybody around him and he actually was one of the first men to, that started to build this marae when it was first built. So he was my grandfather, but I called him dad. Um, I didn't have a father growing up, so he was that father figure for me um, growing up, yeah. Um, he done everything and anything for me. Um, yeah, no, he's pretty special, eh? My grandfather uh, lives here in Bluff and lived here in Bluff for 60 years. We get the privilege of coming down here, painting his portrait, painting um, boats that he worked on, and um, for us, it is a lot different painting this type of mural. You know, we've got boats that we don't paint. We've got portraits that we very rarely paint. But most of all, the, the most important thing for me is just learning stories about my grandfather, who was a person I didn't really grow up with. <laughs> I absolutely loved it. But I have to be honest, I, I sort of had a wee tear in my eye when I looked at it, having Dad right there. Well, where, where Charles has painted the portrait of his grandfather is right beside his favourite watering hole, the Eagle Hotel, where he used to meet all his mates and play pool and play darts. So, yes, yeah, quite appropriate. <laughs> Being able to obviously learn more about my grandfather, get to meet some of my relations and get to know them well, and then also just the people in the bluff are super cool. There's some epic sunsets. Uh, the the Kaimoana is like on another level. They've got it good down here, you know, and for us from Auckland, it's paradise basically. So um, definitely looking forward to coming back. During the week, we had thousands of people through the town visiting the murals and visiting the exhibition. During the Saturday Open Community Day, we had over 500 people through the gallery alone that day. We had an influx of like thousands of people coming through town. It was like bigger than Oyster Fest. Uh, we sold 71 pieces of artwork from the exhibition, just over $30,000 worth of work. Um, so they are some massive, massive numbers. And hopefully we'll bring people, not just to Stirling Point, but do a mural trail through the town and hopefully that'll benefit the local businesses as well. So when you've got like out of town money coming in and spending and then getting to know what Bluff is all about and look at this amazing artwork at the same time, it definitely helps the town. It's been a very, very fantastic week. It's been very quiet around here for the last two years and this has just felt marvellous. Just thank you all and 
We're sorry you're going and we hope you all come back. <laughs> I'll be back. I'll be back. Yes, it's stunning around here and it's the warmest community I've ever been in. And I think that um, this has been the turning point for, for Bluff and Mike Dio um, was the guy that initiated this and did all the running around and he's still running around and like, you know, hats off to guys like Dio. I feel this is probably what we've just done this last week is probably definitely, no doubt about it, the biggest public art installation that Southland's ever seen. Like there's no doubt about that at all. I'll continue to bring our artists down and share, share their work with, with us, you know, deep south.